Hello and welcome to Newsroom Series today. I'm Alumide McCauley. Thank you for joining us. Now, today we're beginning in the Southwest, but first we'll take a look at some of the other top stories elsewhere in the country. It's been an exhausting couple of hours, or rather days, for the abducted Kuriga school children who've now been who've now arrived at the government house. Kaduna Amis High Security. The students were accompanied by the general officer commanding the one mechanized division of the Nigerian army and other army officers. They were received by the chief of staff to the Kaduna State Governor, Sani Kila, and the Commissioner of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Arowan. The federal government has filed tax evasion charges against Binance, a prominent cryptocurrency exchange platform. The government explains that the move which aims at upholding fiscal responsibility, as well as safeguarding the economic integrity of the country, that the federal government has initiated criminal proceedings against Binance. The charges filed at the Federal High Court in Abuja were announced on Monday by the Federal Inland Revenue Service. The lawsuit designated as suit number... 115 implicates Binance with a four-count tax evasion accusation. Newsroom series today is all about the Southwest region. The Ogun State Government says it has commenced registration and capturing of existing boreholes across the state with a view to ensuring charges are paid as part of its strategic and effective water management strategies. The State Commissioner for Environment, Mr. Ala Aresanya, made the disclosure in Abokuta, the state capital, during the World Water Day celebration held at the Abbas complex in the state capital. He said about 240 million gallons of water is needed by residents and industries per day as efforts are being made through infrastructure development and synergy with strategic partners to ensure effective water supply in the state. According to the 2022 report from the World Health Organization, over 2 billion people lived in water-stressed countries with no access to safe drinking water. This is compounded by increase in population and climate change, which has continued to disrupt the water supply ecosystem. Experts and other critical stakeholders believe the response system towards ensuring safe drinking water has been too slow. Apparently aware of this and the need to take proactive measures, players, which include policymakers, government officials, and development partners, are here to raise the necessary awareness as they call for deployment of technology and infrastructure towards strengthening effective management. Much as water is indispensable for survival and well-being, the challenges lies in access, purity, and sustainability. Through effective water governance, for which we are gathered here this morning, we can ensure equitable access to this precious resource and create a foundation for peace, full coexistence by investing in infrastructure. The Ogun Oshun River Basin Development Authority has initiated a crucial water supply project to address the needs of Ogun State. This endeavor aims to bolster water accessibility and ensure sustainable provision to communities within the state. Ogun Oshun River Basin Development Authority proudly has placed and has keyed into this vision and has executed some water supply projects and infrastructures in mostly the rural areas to facilitate the shortest distance 
and accessibility to water sources. According to the State Commissioner for Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, Fumi Efuakpe, rehabilitation of existing waterworks and extension is being carried out to address water supply challenges. We have different schemes at different points, so there are a lot that we are um, rehabilitating now. And by the time, like uh, Shagamu now, we've rehabilitated the, um, the scheme but we're having issues with the um, electricity. So we are talking to the IBDEC people to be able to give us light so that we can pump water and let the people have water. And as part of the measures aimed at ensuring effective management of water resources in the state, the government has commenced documentation and registration of existing boreholes. All boreholes in the state are actually captured and registered. They must have a due reference, all boreholes. And uh, we've started that, and I want to appreciate most of the industries that have operated so far. Uh, the attributes of the boreholes have to be recorded, the extraction capacity has to be recorded, because we know, uh, we've said this several times, that what is not manageable, what is not measurable, is not manageable. If you cannot measure water, you cannot manage it. Urgent global attention is needed in the area of coordination, financing, as well as improved climate resilience. That may be just what is required towards effective water management for social economic development of water supply in Ogun State. A committee on energy has been set up by the University College Hospital, UCH Ibadan, to find sustainable ways of getting adequate power supply to the institution. This is coming on the heels of recent multiple disconnection of water supply, excuse me, that is power supply, to the premier teaching hospital by the Ibadan Electricity Distribution Company. The Ibadan Distribution Company says a backlog of outstanding payments accumulated for over three years and amounting to 495 million naira necessitated the disconnection. Nigeria's premier teaching hospital, the University College Hospital Ibadan, sits on approximately 220 acres of land. With a current staff strength of over 6,000 at full capacity, UCH has a bed space of 1,445. This is in addition to the various medical departments, such as the College of Medicine, lecture theatres, shops, banks and schools, as well as students and staff accommodation. Naturally, it becomes a source of worry when such an important institution, saddled with safety of lives, has to grapple with epileptic or non-existent power supply. UCH has been wrestling with the Ibadan Electric Distribution Company, which has disconnected it three times between February and March this year. They were not paid for some time. You know, this the administration is continuum anyway, which you know. Uh, there were some amount inherited by this current administration, which effort have been made along, made along the line to pay them off. But I know there are still few months that have been hold. This put a lot of strain on patients, the relatives and medical staff. Some relatives of patients told Channels TV off-camera that they had to buy water even for cleaning. Some medical staff are also feeling the pinch. They say areas like diagnostic services and other critical functions are hampered when there's no power. From getting basic needs like water to getting serious life-saving equipment like ventilators to work becomes a challenging task. It has affected the quality of the sanitary conditions and the hygiene on the wards because patients can no longer um, afford to carry out as much of the hygiene, um, hygienic practices that would expect them to carry out. And also, um, especially this is worse in um, the labor wards, the specific areas where there's a high turnover and you need a lot of water to maintain um, this hygiene. At times like these, the hospital resorts to the use of generators, which come on for only a few hours in parts of the hospital. An energy committee has been created to find a lasting solution to the problem. We have an ICU where patients are on ventilators, and then the theater where severely injured patients are operated upon, and we do all sorts of surgeries, and then the accident and emergency, which is the entrance point for people that need urgent care. So these are the places we are exploring between the medium term to, to put in rapidly power, solar power systems and, and that will give us stable power in this place. While we continue for long term, we are also looking at sustainable private power 
uh, we know that the Oyo State government is also doing a project. We are hoping that in the long term there will be alternatives. Meanwhile, the IBEDC says the teaching hospital is being repeatedly disconnected because it has failed to come up with a plan to clear its outstanding debt of 495 million naira. We pay like 26, 27 percent on outstanding. Now the outstanding is 495. And this is maybe over two, three years. Now imagine what the, the exchange rate was when that money was being owed. What we are supposed to pay when that money was being owed. And what we will pay now when that money is being owed. So we are paying more. UCA says efforts are on the way to find a lasting solution to the problem. The hope is that this gets done on time to put an end to unavoidable negative consequences on patients and all concerned. The Gitti State Governor, Mr. Abiyodi Onyebanji, has commissioned the new Abuad Multi-System Hospital in Adeokiti, the state capital. Speaking with journalists during the ceremony ahead of in the area, he appreciated the founder, Mr. Affair, the founder of Afe Babala University, Area Afe Babala, for the initiative and his developmental ideas in the state and Nigeria, adding that he remains the highest taxpayer in the state. fought for this state, your vision for the state will be realized in your lifetime. Yeah. But when you work so hard to ensure that this state continues to make you happy in the mighty name of Jesus. The advert for the reconstruction of this road has been placed and by March 21st, Noma Cruz bid, the Yambia Noma Aja bid. So what would they will award this road before the end of the year, before the end of, the, before the end of April. The roads to the university are bad. I keep on maintaining the road, but the big lorries continue to spoil the road. So I decided to build an annex near the people provide them with amenities, including ambulances, to bring patients first to the annex for immediate treatment. And if need be then, they will then be transported to the main hospital. It is in short to bring medical facility of quality, quality like our own to the people. The Lagos State Domestic and Sexual Violence Agency has extended its training exercise to religious counselors to help achieve its goal in eradicating sexual and gender abuse in the state. The Executive Secretary of the State Domestic and Sexual Violence Agency, Mrs. Titilola Viva Adini, says sexual violence in marriage is spreading its tentacles and demands collective attention to combat it. She also says the state government remains resolute to safeguard the sanctity of every individual, regardless of gender. Our background. People don't know about marriage. The community campaigns against all forms of sexual and gender-based violence continues in Lagos State, and it's the turn of Christian and Muslim religious organizations to be sensitized on how to know the signs when something is not right. Our attitude should be hundred percent. This training is being conducted by the Domestic and Sexual Violence Agency, DSVA, to enlighten religious leaders on the issue, especially the need to create a safer space for their members and communities where they are located. Please, let us have passion. Because the product of some of our activities are the domestic violence or whatever we say we are saying today. We may not even be the one, but those who have been counseling before us. Their role is to ensure that while they work with people who are trying to get married, you are not teaching them based on culture. You are not, based, you are not teaching them based on just religion. Because the question is, some of our, our, our religious beliefs also spend from culture. And then the question is, what do we want? We want peace and we want progress. Executive Secretary of DSVA, Mrs. Titilola Vaivoadeni, says the role of religious institutions is extremely important and they must be engaged to help push the advocacy for change in the right direction. At least 60% of um, survivors had previously reported to their religious cleric before reporting to the agency. Okay. And sometimes they deploy um, mediation as a form of alternative dispute resolution. And yet, 
the issue persisted. And so it was important for us not just to keep data, but to use that data to um, fashion out policies that would be preventive and responsive in nature. And so that's why we're doing this. Some of the religious representatives are marriage counselors who help couples and intending couples deal with various issues in their relationships. We need to build a new future. That is the world changes. And we need to accept that there's no way we can do this thing on a loneliness on one side. We need to work together as a husband and wife. I will give the Lagos State the kudos for this seminar and also to go further to make public education, advocacy on understanding the issues of marriage and how it will be handled. The agency says it will continue to engage all necessary groups in the state to help address the issue of sexual and gender-based violence, particularly among couples across the state. You know, people will begin to put a... 350 Lagosians are the latest beneficiaries of the fifth edition of the Lagos State Community Sensitization and Empowerment Program. Wife of the Lagos State Governor, Dr. Bijoke Sonolu, who is in charge of the initiative, says... People living with disability, widows, youth, and other residents were carefully selected to benefit from the 2024 exercise to help them become independent and also feed their family. She urged them to empower others and reduce the poverty level in Lagos State. The wife of the governor of Lagos State. It's an exciting day for beneficiaries of the 5th Lagos State Community Sensitization and Empowerment Program organized by the Office of the First Lady of Lagos State. 350 people already trained in different vocational skills are being supported by the Lagos State Government with equipment commensurate with their training to get them started in the businesses. I want to particularly encourage each and every one of the beneficiaries here today to take full advantage of the purpose of this initiative. Whether directed at learning about financial literacy, in starting small businesses or assessing support services, consider this grand opportunity in becoming one of the contributors towards economic growth. It is not just a one-time event, it is a catalyst for change, a beacon for hope, for all those striving to break the chains of poverty and inequality. The Office of the Lagos State First Lady works with the State Ministry of Poverty Alleviation and local government chairmen to provide data on those in need of support. Beneficiaries are encouraged to utilize their equipment and not sell them off. For you having this opportunity, hold your family and see that yet the future is bright. Challenges will come, but be strong-minded and be positive that I'm going somewhere. With this little war you're starting with, if you use it well, our excellency will surely call you again and see how well you've used it. Mrs. Sonwolu promised to continue to empower the people of Lagos State through collaborations with ministries to ensure no one is left out. We are able to take the people that are seated here today by using a structure, looking at from the letters that have been written to us, people with disability, the widows that approached us, some youths that also approached us, some um, people in the community that also approach us. So we use those structures to be able to pick the people that we needed to come here today. It has taken us a long time to be able to put this together. We did our training way back in November or so, and we're just doing the handing over to you in March. It shows you that a lot has gone on. And you are also aware that these things, the prices are going up every day. So it will be very, very unfair, you know, for you to get this thing and then just sell it off. Please use it and also use it to teach somebody else. The Community Sensitization and Empowerment Program began in 2019, and this year's edition is coming at a time when many Lagosians are struggling to get through hard times. I'm being empowered with equipment for making soap, and this is going to help me in the production of my soap, and then it's going to help me to improve in my economic potential. Say God bless her and give her more blessing in Jesus' name.
We are very grateful. The equipment giving includes grinding machines, vulcanizer machines, cooking utensils, shoe making equipment, soap making machines, grinding machines, hair dryers, clippers, tailoring machines, and many others. They are encouraged to become employers of labor and contribute to the growth of the economy. Ahead of the All Progressives Congress primary in Ondo State, the Asheori movement in Ondo APC has elected those who will be coordinating activities of the organization in all the 18 local government areas of the state. Founder of the movement and governorship aspirant, Senator Jimmy Ibrahim, says the structure is being put in place to mobilize the people as well as coordinate the distribution of palliatives to members of the party. He was speaking at the venue of the program in Akure, the state capital. The political camp of Senator Jimo Ibrahim, an APC aspirant in the Ondo 2024 governorship election, is leaving no stone unturned in his preparations towards the party's primary election. This time around, the coordinators of Ashiari Movement, a group working for the actualization of Senator Ibrahim's governorship ambition, in all the wards in the state, are meeting in Akure to elect their chairman for each of the 18 local government areas in Ondo State. Senator Ibrahim explains that the aim is to create an interim administrative structure for the Ashiari movement. The margin of uh, leaders from the local government level, unit level, ward level, and local government level. So today they're going to do a ward ESCO and then local government, and then uh, we already done the units. So there is for administrative convenience, so that as your palliative can go to them, they will distribute it to every members of APC, and then uh, also to allow other contestants to have very free use of the our normal ESCO, you know, because the normal ESCO belongs to everybody. And what we have done here is interim. It lasts the primary, after the primary, the, the state chairman of Ashiari movement, Senator Motayo Alasha Adura, says it's all about giving responsibilities to more members towards achieving the desired goal. The more people you give responsibility to, the better for the assignment. Nobody is a sole repository of learning, and nobody can have the energy and the zest to run the whole world now that we have, we have, we have four weeks to a primary election. So we have, what we have done now is to start with collective responsibility that people should work together and ensure the success of our theory. That is the trust of what we have done here today. Those people that are under me, they have been up and doing, they have been working very uh, seriously to make sure that this project comes to fruition. And we are going to do everything possible. They know me. I, virtual, I work virtually in all the wars in our local government. At the end of the meeting, all the coordinators say they are ready to reach out to their various political wards and units and deliver as expected of them. That's it on Newsroom Series today. Thank you for watching. I'm Alumine McCall.